It nourishes the human need for transcendence. That is, it lifts people up. It draws them beyond the here and now and quenches their thirst for God. It enables them to praise God for God's gen generous goodness uh, to them and to give thanks. That's the very first. And it, just thinking about transcendence, <clears throat> I tell the Eucharistic ministers, the readers, the choir members, anybody else, we don't know what people bring to our church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We simply do not know. Yours is to be as excellent as humanly possible. Right. Not perfect. Not perfect. We understand excellence. Perfect makes us nervous. Mm -hmm. Because there's a, there may be a word, there may be a song, there may be a prayer, and you need to deliver it with such human compassion that the person will be able to, to grab onto that signal, and transcendence may be able to happen to them. Second, effect, effective worship addresses the real needs and the real concerns of the people participating. Worship is rooted concretely in the human life and it attempts to uh, symbolize while strengthening it and deepening it as well. And he went on to say that theologically, it expresses what the Hebrew prophets proclaimed long ago that worship truly pleasing to God cannot be divorced from an active concern for the needs of the human community. Read it one more time. Just say that one more time. Worship truly pleasing to God cannot be divorced from an active concern for the needs of the human community. And we all know situations where uh, a person who is, is preaching um, or presiding or preaching or both, uh, you wonder who he's preaching to? Amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you wonder who he's preaching to. And no, in many of our, our uh, schools of theology, uh, the Diversity, as Maya Angelou says, is a wonderful and very rich thing, but it also needs to attach itself to reality. And so therefore, the people who are sitting in front of you uh, as presider or as prayer or as reader or whoever it is, or whatever it is you're doing, you must learn about them. Know their history. Learn some of their music. Learn, learn some of their ways of prayer. Learn some of their concerns for their children. Learn some of their love of God. This is what ministry, pastoral ministry, is about. And we have to continue to challenge uh, the holy people of God who are priests to do those very things. Do not preach to me as I am, as if I am a non-person. Uh, third, a characteristic that challenges many who practice Catholic liturgy is that for worship to be effective, it's important that worship is enjoyable. Yes. Enjoyable. Yes. Now you know, sit down, sit still. <laughs> Don't be making that noise. <laughs> as well. No, no, that worship is enjoyable, he says, open to the joy that dilates the heart. He, he says, puts mind and body at ease. This enjoyableness draws people into God's ever abiding, abiding spirit within them. If people can return to worship as they return to the dining table, anticipating that their hunger will be satisfied, they will have been graced by effective worship. Father Rivers would all say this almost in every lecture that he gave around the country. And finally, and most important, he said, effective worship leads to metanoia. 
that ongoing conversion of heart and renewal of spirit that changes people's perspective.